Also, as part of the training within Chess Gym, is about playing anonymous games. Because like we've mentioned a while ago, you don't know who you're playing. There's sometimes some really strong players on here and sometimes some very weak players. But you just don't know. Because we get so embroiled in looking at people's ratings that we, we assume they're going to play at a certain level. So I really enjoy playing the anonymous games as, as well intermixing the times you know three minutes ten minutes that type of thing so opponents playing real quick so i'm hoping that that's going to be to our benefit that they're not really finding appropriate positions so let's just go nice and steady here so these are like training games you know i'm not i don't tr use these games to play proper games it's like a training game so it's a different mentality even if i'm playing a 10 minute game i'm still classing them as a training game so they're not proper games so let's go here and as usual and um, when i mentioned that they're not proper games they're training games i'll tend to do things not to the complete order of my mantra or anything i will test out new ideas or different ways of moving May, it might look similar in terms of my movement etc but the resulting moves aren't as they're not the better moves they're quirkier moves just to see what happens in the game see if i can get away with it if i'm down a piece how can i then try and scramble back from being a down a piece um so it's all those types of things there different sort of scenarios that i try and create for myself so that then at least if it does kick into my proper game i know i can potentially try and attempt to get some balance in there so time's running down now so we'll just crack on with this game now so it's speed now the opponents moved really fast i'm saying they've not found the better position because they've moved really fast now they're taking their time and now they're, they're pacing it so it looks like their time's going to go lower than ours so yeah that's an interesting maneuver i'm going to go for a scud missile as well it's gone for lazy man he doesn't know what to do so that's works for us we'll just attack the queen see if that happens the opponent doesn't know what to do so once they do that like we do as well if we don't know what to do we just do a lazy man so we're attacking smaller pieces now attacking his knight just defending nice and simple straightforward nothing crazy the opponent is struggling to find something to do which is good for us I'm going to just bring this pawn here why just in case he drops there and he's got a two on one situation going on here now do we want to take or shall we just leave it shall we give him the glory let's take reason i'm taking is his rook is now owning the file for a moment but in the grand scheme of things he's looking to come and get this pawn but this knight is protecting this area so that's quite good for us so i'm just going to bring my king across a little bit more he's chomping at the to bit to get but how can he get to it in his visualization he probably saw oh yes i can come and get this pawn but not today so let's go here 116 so everything's going to be nice and defensible now so knight's going to come here crunch the rook a little bit so i'm going to crunch the rook rook's got safe place i suppose here that's about it so now we can start moving our king across he's going to want to get his knight into the game bringing the knight back around and he does have a pawn majority over here so we'll do a bit of a blocker maybe with this pawn i think he's still going to win out in that sense but if he's doing some king moves um i'm trying to fashion a way in to actually get his rook but it's not going to happen today so what i'm going to do is just push here 59 seconds so it's a time scramble-ish type situation is he going to do this no he's not okay so he's got his knight all activated all huffy and puffy let's go here that might have been wrong because he can take 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 and or if he pushes down trying to get this isolated get the king up here maybe that type of thing because his rook is ah he's given he's got his rook a bit of space gonna have to take no problems gonna have to take and gonna have to just bring this here so his rook has escaped 
but the seconds are ticking. He's causing, ah, he doesn't want the pawn putting a little check on him. Okay, time is running out. I don't really want to open up that night. Uh, let's go here. 36 seconds. That's not bad, but there's no dice, I think, with 18 seconds. Let's go for the rook like we. And it's going for like a little blockader type thing. Let's just go here. Knight can defend. Yeah, okay. Let's bring the rook here. Oh, got the little flash thing. 10 seconds. Pressure's on. I'm surprised this knight didn't come here actually. We can't go there. It's near up there. Yeah, it's going to go there, isn't it? So we'll come here. Attack the knight. Rook. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, it's um, given up. Put a check on. Something to think about. And something to think about again. And yay! Okay, so that was an interesting game there. Under time pressure as well. And realising, you know, we'll probably were... I don't know. Shall we have a look at the analysis on that? Let's see. Because we strangulated their rook for a period of time, so it was long enough to actually win a time scramble. So why it's winning here at the moment at this beginning stage? So we we'll push through, and as we said, we're not looking for anything perfect. We're looking at the knee-jerk reaction moves that get us in the game, and the more natural we can be the better it's going to be for us this is to me that's the, the pinnacle of playing these um, blitz type games is that i'm trying to get it as natural as possible without actually having to think too much and so that's why different things will come in uh, uh, the concept won't be used, utilized in the best ways until i can really get them as natural as possible so bring the rook through so the white is winning because they've, they've got more pieces advanced so pause down the board the pawns are right down there on the king side so we're looking to exchange off they do capture gets to be a bit drawish at that stage doesn't like that pawn move supporting i didn't really see any big big issues with that and we wanted to block off the bishop machine doesn't like that at all because of that aspect there because they had like a three on one in this situation so let's go back how could we have avoided that let's see is it giving us any hints uh, so pushing the pawn up loses us tempo it's basically saying bring the knight back down because it's only got a one on it's only got a one on there at the minute and we'll bring the queen up exchange capture so it's drawish at this moment but then the problem lies when we do this pawn move so it should have been this pawn move because he was going to come here okay smallest of details but a very crucial point now because that's where it changed in the game it gave them the advantage excuse me but like i've always said you can have as many pieces on the board as you want but if the pieces aren't working together or they're not in the right places then you may as well not have any extra pieces so we capture capture so he's got a knight in the corner he's got this rook uh, which is in the middle of the board but it doesn't really as our mantra says it rooks don't have any place in the center of the board unless it's like to your benefit or you're going to capture something big or you've got a checkmate but it's showing that they're winning you know probably because they've got a poor majority on the king side and they've got a poor majority on the queen side so they've got two extra pawns so they should actually be you know winning so the more we're trying to condense his rook in couldn't really see a, a direct attack towards it but it's not really playing in the game and that springs back again to you can have as many pieces on the board as you want but if they can't do anything then they're worth nothing really so in essence here we kind of like suffocated their rook uh, their mainstay so we did capture captured and it gave the rook a little bit of space and at this point now um oh look at that he could have taken the pawn here with a check on the king i don't think i would have been worried even if they'd taken anyway which they did do yeah um 
So moving our knight, because it was protecting the pawn, um, probably was not, wasn't the best move. And we just wanted to see if we could either attack these or come back around and, and get the rook. I think we did mention this, but um, I don't think we went for it, obviously. We didn't go for it. Um, but I wasn't too bothered about the move anyway, because their time was down. And to me, their position wasn't that strong. And it was it's going to take a few moves before they actually get a promotion of sorts. So we bring the rook across. Yeah. So the Ivalba, look how strong it is for white. To me, I'm not seeing it personally, especially with the time frame that they've got. Um, but it's probably something to do with these pawns here. But it is slaying like lock down the rook, I suppose. But they don't have time to be doing that. So we captured, captured, and obviously they ran out of time there. So when you evaluate your games, especially for blitz, um, quite a lot of my games look like this. The opponent is actually winning, but because their position isn't good, they're running out of time, or I'm getting really good positions and I'm just maintaining a steady position and doing a slow grind for a checkmate or, you know, they just basically resign. So it is quite nice to be able to do those things, but again, it's just more for me around about trying to get a natural state out of my long play psychology. This is a five minute training game in the anonymous area. Push through here so it's a little bit longer than the three minute one as we said with the blitzy type stuff um, anything under 10 minutes or whatever um, trying to just go for a natural state not overthinking anything just basically just trying to make it as natural as possible so no overthinking the moves should just be able to just flow out quite naturally And it's not saying you're going for duff moves, you're still trying to go for a good move, but just be as natural as possible. Overthinking causes you the, the issue just there. You can rationalize it afterwards when you do your evaluation with these shorter training type games. And that will sort of flesh out where you're at really in terms of, well, your natural ability. Then it highlights certain things which I take on board, you know, things to work on like the creative thinking, the logical thinking, the non-training mind in a proper actual game. It's key things, you know, to help me develop my game. And that's all based on playing these blitzy type games, which I don't like, but I'm trying to make it work for me. Interesting. And that's where I can make the errors because I'm not doing the overthinking and I'm like just making the move and it's like, okay, fair enough. It's got a two or more. Oh, don't overthink it. I started talking. Don't, there's no point. Just do the move. We can see it later. Okay. Uh... So there's all sorts of pressure going on here. But just keep it natural how do i feel in the game what what's the emotion what what's what what, what is um, making me do the moves you know i've got to get emotionally involved in the game smooth okay don't over let's go here Don't overanalyze, even if you're taking a bit of a hit. Three forty-five. Got plenty of time. Go 
gonna take. So, like I said, in the anonymous game, you don't know who you're playing, and this player is playing really well. They're playing really well. The minus minor hiccup on that last bit there. That's a shame because they were playing really well. They were wiping stuff off all up, all over the place. But I think the position of the pieces they don't they didn't seem to be working together. So we managed to get an advantage here. Just from that winning tempo from the night. And we didn't over overthink anything we we're just looking at getting better position on the board with the pieces that we had but it shows you've got you genuinely have to work your pieces together you know single attacks only work for so long i mean his bishop did a beautiful job come around here taking pawns and then this rook was coming around here doing whatever it was doing looked good but they were all individual attacks so it looks like they probably have left the game now. Ah, oh, I was just singing the praises as well. Well, okay, we'll see if they come back on. It doesn't look like they're coming back on. Okay, so they're probably kicking themselves because they were, um, they looked kind of more advantageous up until the night move. Let's have a quick look at the analysis on that. Well, we know the were because they were pieces up. Yeah, let's just um, quick clip, flip through. Okay, so this felt okay. Just coming here nice and steady. And then, right, okay. Didn't really have any concerns about that, but obviously it's not a good move. Captured, captured yeah no issues here at all i'm not really caring what the um gauge bars showing because felt okay i think where does it go wrong it's when the bishop comes down for the pawn but i don't think that gave them a good position even though they got the pawn Okay, so it doesn't like this poor move here. What did it say? P pushing through the center. I did think about that, but I thought, well, you can always just push down, can't I? But, hey, I wasn't overthinking, going for a natural state. Doesn't like that natural state move there. And our knight coming backwards doesn't like that one. Yeah. I expect in my blitz game, most of the time, to, for it to be not my friend, you know, the actual evaluation. <laughs> I'm very shocked when it is my friend most of the some of the time okay so he's attacking so oh yeah he's got like a two on one with the um pop on the pawn there and it's showing that black is winning um obviously in my head I'm thinking well don't you might take the pawn but what's your position like on the board where are your pieces but at this moment in time I was saying to I was saying yeah they're playing really well so was it just the one pawn that they actually took off then? So then we start bringing our... Oh no, there was an other pawn as well because he's got this position here. Yeah. So that's quite a nice position. They're playing really well. But... Are their pieces actually working together? So we move this bishop obviously to give space here for the knight. But he's got a rook in the centre of the board. And I don't really know what that is 
trying to say is the bishop going to take this pawn what's this rook doing not really clear so let's see what the computer's saying yeah it's saying bring the rook back into the game again so we obviously bring our knight across and then it attacks so we can bring our knight across now so it's basically saying now the rook should take the bishop just sacrifice itself because it is kind of trapped it's really not got anywhere to go i mean if it goes there the bishop takes it goes there the rook takes but then i suppose his bishop takes back so maybe he should just go there which they did do but that's a problem because we have the fork so that rook really caused them the game i think because rooks don't have any place in the center of the board and it went jumping in there and it caused them a problem so that was quite nice for us and then we've got checks on the king coming all over the place we've discovered checks on their bishop picking that up for free so we've got two rooks and the bishop against the rook then the opponent sat and waited for ages for the time to run out so oh yes another training game that's the five minute training game so i think you're getting the idea of the type of training that we do within chess gym and it really is about analyzing your games and also trying to find a state of naturalness uh, within your own game however you do it you might not want to do fast games to do that you might just go well no i'll stick with the long games and that's where it is at learning chess you know learning chess properly and playing chess is with the longer games um so don't be fooled into thinking oh yeah i'm gonna have to play fast you know like i see the grandmasters or the the good guys are playing on you know on the youtubes or the twitch or whatever and they're playing really quick chess and they're playing bullet and all that sort of stuff and you think wow that looks amazing well yeah take it with a pinch of salt yeah you're not you're not playing your best best game when you're playing those fast games you've got to really i think get a good understanding of the the essential fundamental strategies plans ideas etc playing the longer game so that you're then pulling out your best moves the more thought you can put into finding the right move makes sense the, the better your move is going to be up to a point up to a point i would say because if i'm playing somebody who has less experience playing chess and you know that not talking about the rating i'm just saying less experience playing chess and i've got more experience playing chess and um I've, I've worked a system and it's working quite well and they're new to the system and they genuinely don't understand the strategies or anything and they can take as long as they want over a move 99 times out of 100 that move is not going to be a move that is going to cause me any trouble but if they're trained and they're knowledgeable and they're experienced and they practice the right way with a longer game yep and basically they then understand the chess um, psychology etc if they take their time over the move they're more likely to find a move that is going to cause trouble to me okay so probably don't get into the aspect of thinking oh well if i'm thinking for a long time i'm actually going to be playing better no you still have to do all your training to get the understanding of what it is that you're trying to make better and what is better so you need to know what your best is before you can then make it better it's also the two minute zero bullet games that um I jump into every now and then I don't play them as often because they really do kind of mess up your game a little bit but every now and then I just jump in just to have a look uh, state of naturalness I'm not too sure about that <laughs> it's a case of just throwing pieces out and trying to beat the clock okay what's it just 
done. So you just taken something of mine. Deep think. Do, 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 do. It's one of those where um, just going with the basic knee jerk reaction things. I'm tempted to go there, obviously, as rook comes down. Do, do. Go with this one rather. Position, position. Uh, I'm not sure about that. He's got to check on that. Yeah, I'm gonna say. Um, bishop, bishop, bishop. Now it's looking for a funky fork of sorts. Ooh, I thought it was going there. Rook's got me, Rook's got me. I could have just take. No, I couldn't. No, I couldn't. Let's go here. Ah, funky nights. 40 seconds. Bishop's gone. All his rooks are lined up. It's not a back ranker. But he gets the pawn, does he? Maybe not. Twenty-seven seconds. It's a bit long, is that? Let's go. Let's go. Checks on the king. Nope. Checks on the king. Nope. Check on his king. Get the rook. Check on his king. Here. Uh, take. Oh, my time's running out. Bam. Seven, five, four, three, two, one. There, 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 there. What happened? A draw. Oh yeah, having a laugh. <laughs> yeah, having a laugh. Oh dear me. Well, I couldn't move any faster than what I was moving. Look, it's still doing my pre-moves. <laughs> yeah, bullet is not my bag.